Hi and welcome back. I've got a real treat for you today with this wonderful blossom painting from Morgana. The fresh, loose, abstract background contrasts beautifully with the delicate blossoms. But just before the demo, just a quick reminder that my new book, Landscapes in Watercolour, Techniques and Tutorials for the Complete Beginner, is now available to purchase from all good online bookstores in the UK. Check out your favourite bookstore online to see if it's available in your part of the world. It'll be out at the beginning of July in North America. Hello and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Morgana here and today I'll be demonstrating this pretty spring blossom scene painted using watercolour. I'm beginning with my flowers already drawn in pencil with the buds and blooms painted over using masking fluid. This will protect these parts from the wet wash which I'm going to begin by painting some clean water over this entire piece of hot press watercolour paper. I'm beginning the background by painting wet and wet using some lovely bright spring and summer colours. This is quinacridone gold or quin gold. Uh, I'm also going to be using some sap green, some perylene green and Windsor blue green shade. By dotting the colours among one another on the wet paper, we're going to create some really lovely soft transitions between these colours, imitating the dappled golden sunlight as it drifts through a canopy of spring green leaves. At this point I want to add the faint impression of some leafy shapes into this background that are a little fuzzy looking with some nice soft edges, sort of as though they're out of focus. To do this I'm painting into the wet wash before it dries, so the shapes I make as you can see are all softening and diffusing at the edges and almost blurring into the background.
continuing with adding some loose marks for the background foliage, I'm using this dagger brush which has a really lovely elegant slanted bristle shape. As you can see it allows you to create these sort of long leafy shapes really quite simply. Um, but if you don't have one of these then a mid-sized round brush with a good sharp point would also work really well here too. I'm also going to spatter in a small amount of diluted white gouache to create some tiny pale freckles around the blossoms like little drifting dust motes or hints of pollen. This could also be done using a scattering of salt but I wanted a smaller and more subtle effect today than the salt blooms typically tend to give. Before leaving the painting flat to dry Remember to clean off your masking fluid if you end up with a lot of wet paint sitting on it as this will help with a much cleaner removal. After allowing the painting to dry fully, I'm going to emphasise the leaf shapes I already created in the wet wash by using some diluted paint in the same colours that I already used to create the background and just going over and around some of the marks that are already present, painting some loose, delicate leaf and vine shapes. At this point feel free to add as much or as little extra detail like this as you like. Sometimes it all depends on how your wash turns out, as a very busy and complex wash will only need minimal enhancements, while a simpler background wash might benefit for some more additional delicate little details such as these. To colour the flower stems, rather than adding paint, I'm actually going to be taking it away today through a process called lifting. Using a clean damp brush and some clean kitchen paper, I'm tracing over the pencil marks I've already made using a combination of the clean water on this brush and this absorbent piece of kitchen paper to lift away the top layer of paint, leaving behind these lovely delicate pale marks.
Of course, if you wanted paler coloured stems or to paint them a different colour entirely, you could always cover this part over with masking fluid alongside the flower buds before you begin painting, which would of course leave you some more white paper to paint on and the freedom to choose any colour you like. However, that does tend to create quite a hard edge uh, with the removal of the masking fluid, as you'll see later, whereas as you can see here, this technique creates a softer one. Once everything is dry, carefully remove the masking fluid. For this painting I decided to keep the flowers white as I just love how that white pops out against the lush greens and golds we have in the background. To do this I simply used a little bit of very very diluted ultramarine blue and a round brush to delicately add a little bit of shading into the petals. Not too much because um, I don't want to turn the flowers blue, this is simply a simple way to add a little shadow and depth to the white petals without resorting to using a black or a grey paint. Of course you could always change this painting up if you wanted to and use some different colours, turning these blooms into pink cherry blossom or something similar 
and uh, by the same token you can always change the feel or the seasonality of this painting by experimenting using a different mix of colours for the backdrop. I am once again bringing out the dagger brush to finish off these last little fiddly bits on the flowers. As you can see that it has such a nice fine point to create these really thin, precise lines. And with these last little delicate details, the painting is finished. Thank you everybody for watching today. I really hope you enjoyed the video or found this demo helpful. I'll be uploading the pencil outline I created for this spray of delicate blossoms as a downloadable on my Patreon page, which is linked in the video description for anyone who'd like to use it as a reference for their own version of this demo painting. But that's all from me this week, so wishing you all a wonderful rest of the day everybody, and very happy painting.